Hello everyone, in this video, I'll go over a simple example demonstrating the use case of count vectorizer and tf-idf vectorizer in extracting features from text. So let's get started by importing the necessary modules. The reason why we are changing from text to numbers is because, as you know, machines, as advanced as they may be, are not capable enough of understanding words and sentences in the same manner as humans do. In order to make documents corpora more palatable for computers, they must first be converted into some numerical structure or representation. For doing that, I have created a function called as create underscore document underscore term underscore matrix, which takes in multiple documents in form of a Python list. And the second argument is a vectorizer, which is used to convert from text to numbers. There are different vectorizers available, which follow different strategies in converting a text to number. The first thing that I do inside this function is I call the fit underscore transform function, which basically transforms all my messages based on the vectorizer into numbers and stores it into a matrix like format called as doc underscore term underscore matrix. After this matrix has been generated, I basically return a data frame wherein I'll have the count of that particular vectorizer that's applied to a given word and the columns would be basically my overall feature names that are individual words and my rows would be individual documents that I've considered. So I run this cell to import this function into memory. Before we jump onto the details of what count vectorizer is, I'll first explain what I've done here. So I've created a simple list having two elements or two documents. The first document contains text. My name is Bhavesh and the second document contains the text please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I run the cell to import this message into memory and I create an instance of the count vectorizer and save it into a variable called as count underscore vect. Now essentially what happens is when you call the count vectorizer function, count vectorizer takes what's called the bag of words approach. Each message inside my document is separated into tokens. So essentially my first token would be my second token would be name. The third token would be is and the fourth token would be Bhavesh in case of my first document. Once each message inside the document is separated into tokens, the number of times each token occurs in a message is counted in case of a count vectorizer. So when I call the function that I have just defined above, this is what I get. As you can clearly see, the first row signifies the first document that I have in hand, which had the text my name is Bhavesh. So in case of the first document and the first word which I'm considering which is Bhavesh, Bhavesh occurs only once. So that is denoted by this number one. I go to the second word since I'm considering a bag of words approach, I'll consider all the words that are there in my corpus of documents. The word channel does not occur in the first document. So my first document was my name is Bhavesh. So there is no mention of the word called as channel. So the count of channel is zero. The count of is is one. The count of my is one and since name also occurs, you have a one associated with that. Please subscribe to YouTube tokens have a count of zero because they do not exist in document one. When I go to the second document, you will have a count of one for words such as please subscribe to my YouTube and channel because these are the words that are occurring in the second document. Now, if you're using a classification task, you can then basically use this as your training data in terms of your X train and you will have a corresponding Y train value and fit the values as well. But there are values or there are words which are not very significant in case of a classification task like is two and so on and so forth. So you have to remove unwanted words from your overall corpus of documents or you have to give them a lower value as compared to the other values which are important. So the way you do that is using something called as term frequency and inverse document frequency. Now let's go into the specifics of term frequency and inverse document frequency. Term frequency is a weight representing how often a word occurs in a document. If we have several occurrences of the same word in one document, we expect the TF IDF to rise. Now the way you read this formula is the term frequency of the word I in the jth document is basically how many times the word I comma J 
that is say a particular word occurs in that overall document divided by the total number of words in that document. Coming to the next part of TF-IDF which is inverse data frequency or inverse document frequency. Inverse document frequency is another weight representing how common a word is across all documents. If a word is used in many documents then the TF-IDF value would decrease. So essentially this formula that I have mentioned here the IDF of a given word W is basically the log of how many times it appears in the total number of documents divided by the total number of documents. So if you have a word appearing twice in three documents then your IDF value would be log to the base 10 2 by 3. Now there are different ways of computing TF IDF. Sklearn or scikit-learn kind of adds a value of 1 in the numerator and denominator in the IDF calculation just to avoid a 0 by 0 calculation. You can always refer to the documentation of scikit-learn to understand how IDF is calculated under the hood. If the definitions are out of the way, we will go through a few examples to see how it actually works. Let's start by creating a new list called as message underscore 2 which contains two documents. My first document contains the text Bhavesh is my name. The second document in the list contains the text called as Bhavesh likes Python programming language. Let's import this message into memory. Let's create an instance of the tfidf vectorizer and store it into a variable called as tfidf underscore vect. Now I pass that message and the tfidf vectorizer to the function that I had created above and this is what I observe. As you can clearly see the word Bhavesh has the lowest value in the first row. The value of Bhavesh in the first row is 0.37. The value of is is 0.53. Similarly the value of my is 0.53 and even the value of name is 0.53. So this is the overall structure that I get when I apply TF-IDF to the first document. So this is what I am observing. Similarly if I go to the second document as well, the value of Bhavesh is the lowest as compared to the other words that are there. Now if I also visualize the value of Bhavesh in the second document, I see something similar. The value of Bhavesh is 0.33 in the second document and the value of other tokens are really high that is language, likes, programming and python all have a value of 0.47. Since Bhavesh occurs in both the documents, it brings down the overall TF-IDF score of that word across the various documents it is present. Now you might wonder why is the value of is 0.53 and the value of language 0.47. The reason for this is the difference in the total number of words in each document. The first document has 4 words. The second document has 5 words. So is occurs 1 out of 4 times that is the term frequency of is is greater than the term frequency of language. If this idea is clear to you, let's change our messages a bit. I've added two more words called as Bhavesh Bhavesh again in the first document and I expect my overall term frequency for Bhavesh to increase and therefore the TF-IDF value for Bhavesh in the first message to increase. So let's visualize if this is correct or not. So I've imported the message in memory. Now I run the function that I've created. The value for Bhavesh in the first message went up just as expected. There are two things worth noticing here. First the values of other words in the first message have decreased. The values of words like is, my, and name have gone down from 0.53 to 0.36 the reason being the term frequency of Bhavesh has increased. Also the value of Bhavesh in the second message remains the same so both the documents contain the word Bhavesh so the IDF portion is as it is and also I have not even changed the total number of times Bhavesh occurs in both the documents. In both the documents I still see Bhavesh occurring at least once. So neither has TF changed nor has IDF changed in case of the second document. If this idea is again clear to you, let's go on to the third case where I try to change the IDF portion of the word Bhavesh. Now I'll change the message from Bhavesh likes Python programming language 
to I like Python programming language. I am expecting the TF IDF value of Bhavesh in the first document to increase since now Bhavesh only occurs in the first document. So when I run this cell and also run the function, this is what I observe. Bhavesh now has a value of 0 0.866025 which is greater than 0 0.77 in the previous case. The reason being now Bhavesh only occurs in the first document. I do not see any occurrence of Bhavesh in the second document. So it is a special word that is occurring in only one document and is not a common word that appears in all the documents or most of the documents. So this was my take on how you can smartly utilize TFIDF and count vectorizer methods to convert your text into numbers. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do have any questions with what we have covered in this video, then feel free to ask in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer those. If you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them, then the easiest way is to simply like the video and give it a thumbs up. And also it's a huge help to share these videos with anyone whom you think would find them useful. Please consider clicking the subscribe button to be notified for future videos and thank you so much for watching the video.